Yeah, Mike, um, what was it like uh, coming home to the Falcons after, you know, the 1,000-yard year up there in Carolina for you? Um, it's really amazing, to, you know, to be home. Um, I, like, I, you can't, you can't beat it. Um, you know, I got a lot of family here, so um, it's, it's real good to be here. What was the process like? How many other teams did you talk to uh, before you decided, you and your agent, that this was the best place for you? Um, I wasn't the guy doing, um, you know, all the talking to the team. My agent was doing the talking. Um, only thing. Uh, I can say is, is that Atlanta was 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 the best was the best fit. Thank you, Tori. Hi, Mike. Um, now your brother lives in Atlanta. Is that correct? <laughs> yep. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody's in Atlanta. Can you tell me kind of what that conversation was like, telling him that you were coming back to Atlanta? Yeah. So uh, he couldn't believe it. Um, so I, I, I told my brother I was going to the Falcons, and um, um, I was talking to the coaches before it, like it, uh, like it got out. I told, um, so I told him I was going to the Falcon, and was talking to my agent. And before I could, he he told my mom before I could tell her. So that's that's how how happy you know he was. So I was on the phone with him. My agent called me, and I was like, All right, "I'm gonna call you back." And I was like. I called him. I was like, you know what? Let me call mom and tell him going to the facts. He was like, I already did. And I was just like, okay, well, just, just ruin it for me then. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. That's what siblings are for. They ruin everything. <laughs> um, I also wanted to ask you about um, your old coach, um, Ron Gartrell, uh, back at Stevenson. You know, he just retired from a pretty impressive career. I mean, how did he impact you in, in your young years kind of coming up? Um, I would say he impacted me a lot um, coming from uh, Douglas and being, you know, on the west side of Atlanta, you know, all my life. Um, come, you know, it was it was pretty rough growing up on Bankhead. And um, my brother got drafted, uh, moved me out to a uh, lot area. And um, Coach Gartrell, you know, he gave he gave me a chance, you know, to to do something best with my life. And he saw something in me. So, you know, I'm really grateful and appreciative of, you know, of, of the opportunity I was given. Thank you so much. Michael Rothstein. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm curious, when you know, you bounced around the league a little bit. Did you ever think that you'd ever get the chance to play in Atlanta? Uh, like, no, <laughs> never, never, never thought I, I, I had the chance to play for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, like, I, man, it's, it's really a dream come true, to be honest. So, I mean, I know you said, you know, you let your agent handle all that, but was there ever a point where you told him, hey, if this is a possibility, I want to do this because, you know, I've been in a bunch of other places in the league. Like, was that ever brought up with you and your agent? Oh, uh, no. I mean, I would just say, like, Atlanta was basically, like, the best fit. Like, I didn't, I didn't want – to be honest, I didn't want to go anywhere, like, far from home. Um, you know, I've, I've done that a lot. And now the fact that I could, you know, stay at home and wake up in my own bed and not have to buy furniture or, you know, rent a place out. Yeah, I was all for it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Jason Butt. Hey, Mike. Um, I wanted to go back to uh, your brother, James. Uh, you know, I think you're, what, seven years younger than him. Uh, how did his experience being a star at Clemson and then getting drafted really help you learn or, or be prepared for everything that's happened in your career? I'm um, also it helped me a lot because I seen everything, you know, he went through and how he handled everything. So I, I, I seen ups and downs of everything and, you know, I paid attention to it. I didn't want to, you know, fall into the things that he did wrong. And, you know, I don't want to go in those Saints footsteps, but also just wanted to learn, you know, a lot about the process, you know, just in case it, you know, if it ever came that time, you know, I'd be prepared for it. And, um, you know, you know, for, for you, um, what, uh, I guess for your family, uh, you talked about your excitement for being back home, but you know, what, what were the first, uh, when, when you did have that first conversation with your parents after your brother, uh, kind of spoiled it, you know, how, how did they react when they found out you were going to play for the hometown team? Um, my, my mom, like she couldn't believe it, um, which, which is crazy. Um, you know, they, they've been jumping up, you know, with joy. Everybody in my family has been asking me for tickets already. So, um, 
it's, it's been it's been pretty interesting. I can tell you that. Awesome. Thanks, man. Zach Klein. You grew up in the A. You'd think you'd be Michael Turner, Michael Vick. But someone told me you're, you got the number 28 the tattoo because of um, none of those guys. Not even a Falcon. Marshall Falk. How'd your love for yeah. Falk take over the local teams? Yeah, so uh, growing up, man, I watched, you know, I loved watching Marshall Falk play, man, you know, on the turf. And um, uh, it was one play uh, he scored against, I think it was against the uh, Cleveland Browns, where he kind of like juke back. He didn't even look at the guy. And like ever since then, I was I was just stoked. I was just like, this is my favorite running back. You know, ever since then, you know, I always wore 28 because of him. And you have a tattoo, right? 28? Yeah, I have a tattoo, 28. because. Um, so I have uh, universes. I have USC tattooed on this shoulder and 28 tattooed on that shoulder. So um, they, they go so, together. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I know it's emotional. You talk about your family. But what about your pops, man? What would he think of this moment? Man, he uh, I, I know if it's if it's anybody, you know, that would be, you know, the most excited it'd be him. You know, that's something, you know, he he's always wanted. If anybody wanted me to play for the Falcons, it it'd be my dad, man. And and he he'd be going crazy right now. And um and, you know, I just I just wish he, you know, he he could see how, how far I came and and how everything went for me last year, you know, just playing for him. And um it, it, he just love it. I just know that. All right. Looking forward to getting to know you and uh, playing someone said uh, Among Us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I got it. you. I'll be the stranger knocking you out. No. <laughs> All right, man. Kelsey Conway. Hey, Mike. I know you just said Marshall Falk was uh, your favorite, but who's your favorite Falcons running back or player having grown up watching this team so closely? Um, I watched, you know, of, of course I watched Ward Dunn a lot, you know. Um, he, you know, he able to juke everybody, um, you know, catch out of backfield, do it all. Um, my favorite, though, uh, I like Michael Turner, Steven Jackson. Um I'll probably have to go with Ward Dunn. And then last year, you put on a, quite the show against the Falcons. How much of that was that you were trying to show off in front of your uh, hometown fans? Uh, it was it, a lot. Um, I, I would say uh, it was it was most definitely personal because it was, you know, the home team and uh, my family was most definitely deep at the game. So. It was it was it was personal, and I, I didn't tell a lot of people, but I most definitely like I cried after the game when we played the Falcons the first time at home because I just knew like my dad would like he would have uh, he would have wanted to be there and to to see how how the game went like he would have he would have uh, he would have loved to be there. D led, you got any follow ups? Yeah, Mike, you know, I covered James, too, back in the day at the Clemson and was at your pro day. Uh, but just to uh, clear it up, uh, what was your dad's name? And then what was the best advice that James was able to give you um, that to help you out on this journey here? Um, my dad's name was uh, Michael Oliver. And, uh, the best advice I got from my brother that he told me. Uh, right. Uh, Probably be, you know, to, to never quit. You know what I mean? Never give up. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's probably one of the best things. Um, he, I watched my brother. I watched my brother work. You know, as 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 hard as he could. So, um, you know I mean, and he never really gave up. So it was one of the things I probably say I learned the best from him. Thank you, Tori. You have anything else? Yeah, I can follow up on uh, on that. The the no give up uh advice i read a quote from you not too long ago that said that you were kind of saying it could have been really easy to give up during your time in seattle and yeah. now look and i guess looking back at that time period what pushed you through that and now that you're in this position now how grateful are you that you did yeah so um like you said like when i was in seattle it was like pretty tough being on practice squad and Seeing the guys in front of me, um, basically, I wasn't able to to 
to contribute at all because of the the guys in front of me. And it, it, it did hurt a lot. So I had a, a lot of down days and it was kind of depressing. And um so what I what I did was I was I was trying to find ways to to make the game uh more fun for me and and more competitive to to where I can show that whenever my um, my time comes that I'll be ready. So um there's this uh motivational uh video I used to watch um uh ET and um it's called uh, UOU and I used to watch it like every day at six in the morning and it'll just it'll just push me through this you know through the day put a smile on my face and um you know it just made me you know look at life and football as in you know what I mean I owe it to myself to you know be a better person a better football player and you know to never give up Michael, you have anything? Um, yeah, actually, really quick, you know, because no one's really asked you about it. Like, what has Arthur told you role-wise? What, where he really sees you, where he envisions you, especially kind of seeing what he done with Derek over the last couple of years. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't, we haven't really talked about um, my role yet and what I'll be doing. Um, actually, I don't even want to, I don't even want to say what my role will be yet anyway, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what my role is yet. I might do, I might not know, but yeah, I don't, I don't think I know yet. <laughs> but when you see what he's done with, when you see what he did with, with their Tennessee, is, is well, that when you're talking about fit part of what you're talking about, you're like, ah, that, that, you know, my size type back, my, you know, maybe how I run. I mean, Derrick Henry had a great, uh, well, 2,000 yards rushing, so um, I don't think anybody would complain about anything that Arthur's doing. Cool. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Jason, Bud, any, anybody else have any other follow-ups? Uh, yeah, yeah, man. I got, I got one. Um, you know, last year in Carolina when Christian went down, um, you know, that was really that, you know, the big opportunity for you. When, when you realized you were going to be the guy and have to be counted on for – for numerous weeks, you know, what, what was your mindset like then? And how much did it feel like this is a, a big time, maybe tryout opportunity, you know, when it came to your career as a potential number one back in the NFL? Um, I, I was, I was, you know, most definitely uh, grateful for the opportunity. Um, you never want to see anybody get hurt. The only thing I, 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 I hate it. Well, I'm going to say I hate it. I took personal how um, people kind of like, like wrote it off when I was there because uh, I guess people didn't know like like what I could do or whatever. So, but I felt like I felt kind of like disrespected a little bit. So um, I, I took kind of everything personal when playing. Cool, thanks. Zach, just last call. Yeah. Just real quick, uh, how many tickets you get in come season time when you're supposed to be focused on football? Who's who's in charge of tickets for the fam? Because I can see you getting hit left and right from everybody, from family and back in the day as well. Yeah, it's it's most definitely going to be me. Other than that, I, I don't I don't know how everybody else is going to get tickets, but I, I I refuse to let this ticket thing get in my head. It, it has before when I was in San Fran. I refuse to like let this like you know mess up my time being in Atlanta. I, I don't want any distractions. So you're going to be the one delegating this thing? Yeah. Uh, it'll probably be the same people every week. And, and <laughs> okay. <other than> that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, there's a limit on tickets. I'm sorry. I can't do anything about it. <laughs>